Hello, welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Hunchback of Notre Dame. Chapter 2, The Pope of Fools. In the blink of an eye, everyone started to carry out Coffinol's idea. Townsmen, students, and lawyers all went to work. The little chapel inside the Great Hall was chosen as the palace for the theater of grimaces. Two barrels were placed underneath the window the students had broken. The candidates were to stand on the barrels and look through the window with their faces covered. When they frowned, scowled, or sneered as best they could, they would remove the covering and show their face to the audience. In a few minutes, the chapel was full of people who wanted to compete. The first person stood on top of the barrel, put his head through the window, and uncovered his face. He was squinting and wrinkling his forehead. His eyes bulged out. The crowd roared with laughter. And that's one of the silliest faces people can make. Well, that's what fun they did as they stood on the barrel. No one stayed in their seat. Everyone howled and hooted. With each new face that came through the window, the laughter grew. Soon everyone in the crowd was making faces, posting as much as a person up on the barrel. Jehan sat atop the statue and watched every free thing. He laughed so hard he almost fell over. Meanwhile, poor Pierre was taken backstage. The actors had stopped the play completely because they too were having, watching the fun. Poetry, he thought, is no match for comedy. At the very moment, the ugliest of ugly faces made its way through the frame. The man had a mouth like a horseshoe, a large triangular nose, a horny lip with a jagged tooth sticking out. One bushy red eyebrow and one eye covered by a, a wart. Here was the winner. The crowd rushed into the chapel and to find that the person was not making a face at all. He was just that ugly. On his back was a giant hump. His hair was nothing but red bristles. His legs were strangely put together in two different sizes and his feet were huge. But despite looking so terrible, the man had an air of strength and courage around him. It's Quasimodo, someone called the bell ringer. Well, look at his hunchback, one of the students yelled. He's ugly. He's terribly ugly indeed. The students teased him, and the woman covered their faces. Johans walked up right at Quasimodo and laughed in his face, pointing and calling a name. Quasimodo picked him up and tossed him back into the crowd. He didn't like it when people teased him. He didn't, un he didn't understand that this was a festival of fools, and the students were just having a bit of fun. Luckily, Johans wasn't hurt. He sat up, brushed himself off, and laughed. Kopanol, the tailor, was amazed to find that Quasimodo was so strong. He pushed himself forward and clapped his hands on the hunchback's shoulder. You've got quite the arm there. Quasimodo didn't stir. I said, Kopanol continued, must be very strong. How do you feel about wrestling? What do you say? Quasimodo didn't answer him. An old woman from the crowd shouted, The bells must have made him deaf. Well, he's the perfect, ugly, and deaf Pope of Fools, Kopanol said. Does he speak? He can speak when he likes, the woman replied. Then we hereby crown you the Pope of Fools. Congratulations, said Kopanol. Kopanol placed a silver robe of the Pope of Fools over Quasimodo's back. The crown hushed for a moment. A student raised him up on their shoulders. Quasimodo smiled when he saw all the straight, handsome, well-shaped men and women. The students carried him up and down the streets of Paris for a parade. Meanwhile, Pierre forced the actors to continue with the play. He didn't think anyone would leave, but in the blink of an eye, the room was nearly empty. Oh, there were a few old men and women left behind. Some of those students had stayed atop the window where they could watch the play if it interested them or look out at the parade. Pierre tried to convince himself that was good enough. It's Esmeralda, one of the students called suddenly from the window. Esmeralda is in the square. At this, everybody in the Great Hall abandoned the play completely and moved to the windows. The play came together to a crashing halt. Again, Pierre urged actors to continue. We can't, Jupiter said. Why not? Pierre hissed. The students have run off of the ladder. They wanted to climb up and see what was happening. This was the final blow. These Parisians, Pierre muttered to himself, they come to see a play. 
and they refuse to watch it. Who is this Elsa Meralda, and why is she ruining my play? Okay, that's the end of that chapter. See you later.